It's Sunday morning, and every decent man and woman is listening to Test Miles with Nick Miles on FM News 101 KXL. Buckle in. Welcome to Test Miles. It's a Sunday morning, and this week the show is coming to you from Snoqualmie Falls in Washington State. We're at the Dirtfish Rally School, where we have gathered together 24 of the best CUVs and SUVs that are on sale in North America to evaluate them. And we'll be talking to the manufacturers throughout today's show and finding out which are the best. Now, there are four different categories. Compact utility vehicles, premium compact utility vehicles, family utility vehicles, premium standard utility vehicles, and then separately, an off-road category for those vehicles that do best on the off-road. Now, in those categories, we're going to first go through the compact utility vehicles that we're going to be evaluating. The Ford Escape, the Hyundai Tucson, the Jeep Cherokee, the Mazda CX-5, the Nissan Rogue, and the Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid. We're sitting inside the Ford Escape right now. Sean, look at the inside of the vehicle. How do you feel? I think this one has one of the better interiors, and in I love how it's designed and sloped down so it has this fluent motion for the driver. It handles really nicely, too. I took it out a little earlier. All right, we're going to uh, drive out of the warehouse here, which houses all the vehicles onto the off-road course and see how this Ford Escape handles. Now, very light, it's a nimble handling, and it does fairly well on regular road surfaces, but once we get it out on the autocross, we're gonna see how it handles. Driving up to uh, handle it on the autocross segment. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how we put these vehicles through their paces. First, first of all, on the autocross segment, we have a straightaway which starts on gravel so you can't spin the car out too much and then heads towards a brake area where you can test how fast the vehicle brakes. Then there's a small S-Bend, a slalom, and another S-Bend, and that's how we're evaluating those vehicles. This is $35,470. There's 21 miles a gallon in the city, 28 on the highway, which is 24 combined, 240 horsepower, and 270 pounds-feet of torque. It's a Ford Escape Titanium four-wheel drive. So we're going on the gravel part. Nick just spinned out the back tire, and now we're drifting around a corner, coming up to the brake pad. Nick stops. Great stopping distance in the Ford Escape. Now we're going off, fishtailed a little bit again. This We're going around through an S column. Nick's OA overtook it. Now he missed a swallow cone. <laughs> we're going through the swallow test where it's actually handling really nicely. Going through the S pattern and we are going. It handled really nicely. There was a couple spots where it was oversteered, but I felt like this car had all control over it. What about you? Absolutely. Slalom was good and uh, the braking uh, was great. And uh, in fact, you know, I really pushed it hard. It did extremely well on the slalom course. So I would give this uh, about a solid eight for pretty much every category. Yeah, I'd give it a, a seven, five to an eight. I love the interior and the styling look on this because it's different. All right, let's take a quick look at the other vehicles that are in this segment. The Hyundai Tucson Limited all-wheel drive, $28,700. A 20-mile-a-gallon in the city, that's 25 on the highway, a combined of 22, with 182 horsepower and 177 pounds-feet of torque. There's also the Mazda CX-5 Grand Touring all-wheel drive. That's around $31,760, with 24 miles a gallon in the city, around 30 on the highway, a combined of 26 and 184 horsepower. Two other vehicles in the segment, the Nissan Rogue SV all-wheel drive. That comes in at just under $30,000, 25 in the city and uh, 28 combined with a 32 on the highway, 170 horsepower. And finally, the Subaru XV Crosstrek Hybrid, the first hybrid by Subaru that they've ever had, 29 miles a gallon in the city, and that gives it 33 miles again on the highway with a combined of 31 and 160 horsepower. So we've jumped into the 2014 Jeep Cherokee and Scott Brown is with us. We can't actually get him to, to get on the phone with us on the show so we had to actually track him down here in person at the event. Uh, Scott, big vehicle for Jeep. Huge, huge vehicle for Jeep. Um, you know that compact sport utility segment, largest SUV segment, huge segment in the US, hugely competitive, a lot of great products in this segment. Um, 
but most of those products, as good as they are, they're basically grocery getters, and we're going to separate from them and give vehicle in that compact SUV segment a vehicle that has great capability, whether it's off-road with, with 4x4 lock, you know, so you've got a low lock range, great towing capacity, but yet the safety and the fuel refinement and all that other stuff that people expect and demand. Now with this vehicle, with a Cherokee, you can get the capability. All right, so let's talk about some key points about this Cherokee. Uh, the price is starting uh, low 30s? Yeah, it starts in the high 20s, you know, and, and this is a fairly loaded vehicle, and, and we're at like $37,000. Yeah, tra- tra- and Trailhawk is kind of... Uh, as much as you can get the off-road version of, of the vehicle. Now, a few things that are significantly different from the competition. First of all, trail rated. Um, that's big for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and trail rated to us means basically off-road capability, water fording, articulation, the, the, the slopes you're able to climb, the mud you're able to go through, um, things like that. And then also uh, the transmission. Um, we're going to pull up to the course right here as we speak, but also the transmission, uh, nine-speed. Nine-speed automatic, you know, really helps keep the engine in a, in a great power band and helps us deliver great fuel economy. Again, you know, Jeeps have always been known for their off-road capability. Um, you'll notice on this, this is basically like an autocross, a skid pad. There's going to be some great on-road handling characteristics here. So you try to develop a vehicle that broadened the horizons. This really came into where the Liberty had exited. Correct. Um, and you try to broaden the horizons. There's a different platform that you started with. This was the Julieta. Yes. Uh, and then you basically put all of the Jeep attributes attributes right onto it so your all-wheel drive systems right. your your trail rated uh, that great new fuel economy one of the things that you guys are at jeep are famous for under the chrysler umbrellas is the new interiors that you've done in these cars and so tell me a little bit about those as we get ready to do the autocross yeah just you know world-class materials not just in the feel and the touch but also in the ergonomics the layout you know the redundancy of buttons so quick quick you know, quick hits for tuning the radio and turning it off in the HVAC, but then an electronic, the 8.4 inch largest digital screen in the industry, but then you dive deeper into stuff. So a, co- a great combination of, of electronics, ergonomics, and then quality of materials. And colors too. Co- yeah, great colors. You know, we're in, a, in, a, in, a, in an off-road, and so we've got something that has a lot of earthy tones and, and just looks great. So I know that we talked to Klaus, who originally came from Mercedes-Benz, yeah. and, and he had really brought that interior um, extras to this car, even noticing things like the chrome surround on the sun glass holder and the light fixtures. And he pointed out to me the soft touch openings and the fact that that even if you go to a Lexus nowadays, they don't have those those right. things on the inside. They don't have the cro- the chrome touch and the soft opening. I was with him when he actually experienced this vehicle for the first time. He'd never seen it out of the drawing board, and it was quite amazing to see him do all the touch. Are we ready to go, Lily? You gotta wait till the car gets Not off. Quite. We have some room. We have some room. We're being instructed to uh, to make sure that we don't come too close to the vehicle uh, behind us. I would tell you the interior package on this car, clearly my favorite in the segment. I mean, the interior stuff, and, and somewhat the exterior styling. The exterior styling of this is a car that either you love or you hate. And uh, I'm a lover. Right. Well, I, we, polarizing, we like polarizing. We want people to uh, make a decision, a conscious decision, and love what they get into. And, and it's not going to be for everybody, but it's an emotional thing, and, and we love that. All right, so are we ready? You're ready to All go. All right, here I'm we go. We're doing, the, uh, we're doing the, the, the course onto the gravel again. Sean, talk us through it. So we just get through the... God, we can't do it while we're sitting back here. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Hey, you're not in the front seat. <laughs> Nick knocks over a cone. Oh, whatever. First, the hard right Cone's turn, fine. handling, you know, turning capability. Ouch. Nick works the electric power steering. Follow up, Sean. Again, nimble handling. Gotta be nimble if you're a Jeep. Gotta be able to, you know, get through the, you know, off road courses, off road trails. The only thing that did not handle well in this uh, this test that we just did was Sean. <laughs> Sean, how you doing back there? I'm good. <laughs> A little beat up. Uh, so that, there, there you are. That the, you learned something there, Sean. You're listening to Test Miles uh, on FM News 101. We'll be back with our second category of testing in a moment.
It's Test Miles on FM News 101. Test Miles, like NASCAR, but with one right turn. TestMiles.com. Welcome back to Test Miles. This is Nick Miles, and today the whole show coming from the Dirtfish Rally School in Snoqualmie, Washington, where we are testing 24 of the best CUVs and SUVs. Sean and I right now inside Mercedes-Benz GLK, a delicious small SUV that uh, is very popular and has all of the luxury accoutrements that everybody expects from Mercedes. And uh, joining us is Deidre. She is the representative on the West Coast for Mercedes Public Relations. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the car. Okay, so we have the all new GLK 250 Blue Tech here today for our um, test drive here at Dirtfish. All wheel drive, 200 horsepower, an amazing car, but you still get great fuel economy. And we're driving uh, on the course as we speak, and I'll, I'll catch up with what Sean's doing in a second because Sean is driving. Uh, diesel. Now, Mercedes is pretty much the big pioneer of diesel in the United States. Yes, that is right. We've been in the diesel game a very long time. So, fuel economy-wise, what are we getting out of this uh, GLK? Okay, so it's 24 city, 33 highway, and 28 combined. That's actually uh, pretty good for something this sort of size, five passenger, and it has a sort of a, I would say, a medium road, off-road capability, right? Yes, definitely. And then, you know, with the all-wheel drive, it definitely makes for a nice ride on this off-road course. All right, so we are going to enter the course in just a second. It has uh, a little bit of water, a lot of bumps, um, avoided some rocks and trees, and we're going to see if Sean can actually manage to do that. So we're entering the beginning of the off-road course here in the GLK. Now, uh, interesting temperatures today, quite warm up here in Washington in Snoqualmie, a lot of sunshine, which means a lot of dust, and so we have to be careful that we can get through the dust. All right, gravel roads as we enter the off-road course, and Sean takes a fairly relaxed left, and we're gonna take a harder left here into what is a very big sort of tree chicane, slightly throwing the back end out there, handling nicely the, uh, the traction control system kicking in a little bit, and a hard right turn now. It's almost like a big chicane around some uh, shrubbery, and you can hear it's getting quite bumpy, and nobody's grabbing on for any of the handles yet. Sliding the car out as we make another left turn. Gonna make a right round some more shrubs here. It's about 40 feet between them. This uh, GLK handling really nicely. There's not been a single light on on the dash and uh, not a single uh, sliding of the back end that wasn't controlled. Here is the uh, big bumps as we go through and the big straightaway and the second part of this course is now going into the uh, the water area which is basically large potholes with lots of water sliding the back end of the vehicle out as we enter slowly into the off-road um, Deidre is handling pretty well I mean you haven't grabbed for a handle once no nope, not at all some nice water fording here a left hand turn through the water and back onto the mud and then through the gravel now, uh, what sort of price is the GLK starting? The GLK starts at $38,590. And that's a really reasonable price. And then this particular one, uh, kitted out with all the extras is? This one's at 57000 Great. So you can see you can get a lot of extras on your uh, GLK. Well, we really enjoyed driving this. Now, this uh, wh which category does this fall into? This one falls into the premium compact utility vehicle premium compact utility vehicle. We'll find out if the GLK wins its class at the end of the show today. So now we have uh, got out of the Mercedes-Benz GLK and jumped into the Volvo XC60. This is the T6 version and we're going to put it through the exact same course and see how it handles. And just to keep things even we have the same driver. All right entering the course and it's that left hand turn again around the gravel. And uh, this, yeah, this handles us very well. It's not, we're not losing it at all. Oh, a bit of oversteer there. And uh, pushing it through the first right hand turn. And here we come up to the next left hand turn. And it did way too wide on that turn. And the wheels tucked under the body a little bit. 
and the right hand turn again around the course left hand turn around the shrubbery and here comes those big bumps that we went through last time and uh, yeah this definitely is a little more uh, bumpy than the last one a right turn through the gravel uh, around some more trees and we head on a straightaway down about 150 yards to a left hand turn now they put a water truck down here to stop the gravel flying up as much and then into the right hand turn again harder con to control this vehicle almost uh, went uh, too far towards the cones and again through the off-road section with the water and the bumps and uh, does seem a, it seems controlled, but a little more of a rough ride. I think the Mercedes had a little more control going through this. There is control, but there's a lot of understeering going on. And then uh, as we make a left uh, out of the water course, back onto the gravel top, and uh, again, harder to control this vehicle. Now this does 20 miles a gallon, uh, a combined, uh, 17 in the city, 24 on the highway. Uh, the Volvo X60 T6 all-wheel drive has a base price of $41,550 and an asking price of $52,215 with all the extras on it. A nice performance under the hood. You'll find that 3-liter six-cylinder turbo engine and, uh, and a 300 horsepower motor, a six-speed automatic transmission. And so that, uh, that's those two cars in this class. There's also a class called the Family Utility Vehicles, and that contains seven vehicles in total. The brand new Chevy Tahoe four-wheel drive LTZ. Now this is probably one of the biggest cars on sale in North America. $70,580 is as tested. It does 16 miles a gallon in the city, 22 on the highway. That's 18 combined, but has a massive 355 horsepower. Now, one of the vehicles that's going up against is the new Dodge Durango Limited all-wheel drive. One of my favorite cars, I did name it the best full-size SUV in America recently on a Fox News segment. Just under $50,000 is the model we tested. 14 miles a gallon in the city, 22 on the highway with a 16 combined. Does have 360 horsepower and 390 pounds-feet of torque. There's the Dodge Journey Crossroad all-wheel drive. 31000 that goes for this has a new trim level the crossroad this year makes it look more aggressive this is a great alternative to a minivan it also has fairly good fuel economy 16 uh, 24 with a 19 combined the Honda Pilot is in there, one of the oldest SUVs without being updated in America, but still best in class in a lot of segments. $42,000 and change for that with 1724 in the fuel economy combined of 20. And it does have quite a good horsepower of 250. The Kia Sorento, definitely a favorite to win this category. That's at 39000 fully loaded and gives you 18 and 24 in fuel economy. Up against the Mitsubishi Outlander, and as well as the Nissan Pathfinder. The Outlander, 32000 and change. The Pathfinder, 44000 and change. Those are the vehicles in the family utility category. When Test Miles returns, we're going to get a little daring with some premium SUVs, and we'll do a bit of off-roading. <laughs> Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com. Favorite us, tweet us, friend us, love us, all at testmiles.com. All right, welcome back to Test Miles, and we are going to stop with the extreme off-road course. And when I say extreme, it's not necessarily extreme for the vehicle that is sitting inside. The uh, new Range Rover, full-size Range Rover, a long farm Range Rover to guide me through some of the hills and valleys of this particular off-road course is Tim. Uh, Tim, tell me about your history with Land Rover. Mine actually started about 21 years ago with Camel Trophy in 1993. I was a participant and team member on that team in Sabah, Malaysia. And you have been instructing people to drive through off-road courses ever since, right? Instructing everything within Land Rover, all the, the fun things that we get to do, vehicle launches, off-road, retailer trainings, the magic trainings that we used to do, the in-retailer stuff. So I, I will tell you, one of my most exciting things I've done with Land Rover is when I went to Solihull, um, they put me, they had me drive over the teeter-totter with a Range Rover, which is basically a giant teeter-totter. And you drive up one side and it 
goes down and you drive off the other side and that is a lot of fun so you do a lot of exciting things all right are we ready for this course it's it's fairly mild of what for what a, a range rover can deal with right it is it's uh we have some articulation some ditch traverses and a little bit of side tilt all right so we'll have fun with and it. and and tell us what we're in so you've changed the settings in the vehicle right yep as we came up we we transition into low range we raised the vehicle up with the air suspension we put mud and ruts on with terrain response, and so we're ready to go. On the display on the dash, we have all of our off-road information. tells us how the vehicle's configured and actually what it's even doing as we go through the course. That's pretty incredible because I'm looking at the axles change right now. Yep. So you can see the articulation with the, with the, or the wheels change. It shows the wheels. If, if the axles turn red, if the representation turns red, it means that we're fully articulated and a wheel may be already off the ground or at the point where that wheel will lose traction the vehicle will transition the traction to the other wheels and the power to the other wheels as needed so we're going through what would be considered a, an extreme farm rut right now it's water one side probably as much as a two and a half foot difference maybe less much an 18 foot uh, 18 inch sorry two and a half inch difference maybe 18 inch difference between the angles of the wheels right yep a little lower on one side and it, it often that's what you would do if you've got a rutted road and you don't have a choice you'd put one wheel in the ruts and drive alongside with the other wheel out of the ruts to give you a little more ground clearance so uh, now what what's this portion of the track going to show us so this we've got a ditch and this would be representative of, of a situation where we've we've had a washout and we may even touch as we go through this so we just ease the back through in that case we didn't but it, potentially a washout so you just ease the nose of the vehicle through then the back and carry on now uh, tell me a little bit about the, the Range Rover that we're driving here today this is an HSC it's a 2014 HSC Range Rover and so it's a v6 supercharged 340 horse the the big news for Range Rover is it's an all-aluminum architecture starting last year with this and now the Range Rover Sport so uh, so much lighter much lighter, yep, about 800 pounds lighter than last year's vehicle. And we've retained all of our off-road capability. In fact, we have the deepest wading depth we've ever had, 35.4 inches. All right, so we're coming into a slightly different uh, area here. What does this terrain represent in the real world? In the real world, typically you'd see articulation bumps like we're going to be approaching here soon. Typically they'd be more on a hill as the vehicle goes up it'll spin out the wheel, the, the gravel, the terrain underneath of it, and you'd see these holes. And with our situation, with our traction, we're able to transition the power to the wheels that are on the ground that have the ability to, to move the vehicle forward. Now we're looking at, I'm looking at some, uh, a picture of the wheels here, and it's showing me the lock and unlock. Of, I presume that's the differential, right? Correct. We actually run three differentials, so a front and a rear, and on the screen we represent the this vehicle does not have our optional rear locking differential, it just has a locking center dip, but traction control takes the place of that. So just like you just did, touch the throttle, the wheels, if they start to turn just a tiny bit, it transitions the power over to the other wheels. And you can see the complete articulation there as we go red on the axles, yet the vehicle walked straight through. And it's kind of interesting because I'm not sure I could have actually walked <laughs> <laughs> through that very well, but the, the the Range Rover got through that over some some big rocks here and into a little bit of water. Looks like a bit of a stream, and I know I know we've caught the back end once or twice. That, that and that's not a real problem because you guys protect for that, right? We do, and what we touched as we t did touch the back end, transitioning through that cut back there. The trailer hitch is the lowest point, and it's a class three receiver, so it's steel and it has a flat, just like a touch right there, right. has a flat piece on the bottom of it, but doesn't doesn't hurt anything. Right. So now, fairly straightforward, going through uh, just what would be seen as maybe uh, things you'd see on a farm field, but we're coming up to a little bit of a hill here. It's probably about uh, three feet, four feet high at the highest point, and we're actually gonna get onto the side. Uh, so we're gonna push over a little bit. Uh, oh, we're going right the way over it. Yep, perfect. Yeah, if we can, All right. we can play with. All right, we're not following. We're not following where people have been before. We're we're trailing new ground, right? So, to, yeah, just like this. So we'll go a little higher on this side tilt because of our aluminum architecture and very low center of gravity in the vehicle. You can see we're at a pretty extreme side tilt. Yet 
there's no danger of the vehicle. Tipping. So uh, I'm looking. I am looking down at you. You are below me. This vehicle is basically so tilted that that I don't know how to explain it better than that, Sean. It's hard to put in words, but literally, I'm in the back seat holding on to the oh crap handle because if not, I'd be in the window. It's how extreme this tilt is. So how many how many degrees does this tilt? Well, it feels like it's ready. To, so as we just slid down the hill a little bit there, it feels like it's ready to go over. But in fact, the vehicle can handle a lot more than we're at. We're probably only at about 30 degrees there. And the vehicle is easily capable of in excess of 40 degrees on a side tilt. And then we're sort of exiting the bottom of the off-road course. Now, um, very, very popular. There, you do have schools for people who want to learn to do this stuff, don't you? We do. We have several driving schools around the country, one in Vermont, one in North Carolina at the Biltmore, one at Quail up out in California, and then up in Canada as well at Montebello. So customers are able to go to those driving schools and learn to drive a Land Rover in that kind of an environment. Well, Tim, thank you very much. We're going to go and test uh, one of the other vehicles in this class uh, now and find out how well that does. The Wrangler. This is the full-size luxury version of an off-road vehicle, and the Wrangler is more of a rugged version. Um, and let's see how capable that is. All right, so the final part of our off-road experience for this Mudfest up in the Northwest, test driving 24 different SUVs, CUVs, and I should add a couple of exhibition trucks as well. Uh, we are in the Jeep Wrangler, and uh, Sean is going to take the off-road course again. We've done this in the uh, Range Rover, and now we're going to try it in the Jeep Wrangler. You, uh, we've had this vehicle on the show. You're in love with it, Sean. I do. I love the fact that it's the best off-road capable vehicle out there. Granted, I do like that Rover that we were just in, but this is like $40,000 cheaper and you can do almost anything in it. Same course that we did with the Range Rover. It's a lot, lot more bumpy than the Range Rover. Yes, it is a lot more bumpier, but the people that want this vehicle, they like that. They want that roughness of the vehicle. All right, we're going over now. Uh, the area that which looks like a washed out stream. Sean's trying to avoid it, so make it easy for the car. I'm not making it easier, I'm making it so we don't bottom out. And again, having no trouble coping with the, with the Tundra, but at the same time, a, a lot more of a rough ride in the Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, but even like on some of these wet and muddy spots, I mean, it's not even slipping, it just grips and it goes. All right. I should hope so. Uh, now into a deep stream area. This is a sort of a marshland. Pulling through the marshland and back up onto a small hill of about four feet. And the vehicle gets over it very well. We're coming up to that area in which uh, we put the car through a, the situation of getting it on a steep angle. It was about 36 degrees in the Range Rover. And uh, it's doing, it's slipping a bit, but it's doing fine. And we get over the uh, angulation coming up to a large pile of rocks and rubble we're gonna to have to get across with the vehicle all right so that's the course in the uh, 2014 Jeep Wrangler and it is the four-door version it's the one that we test drove on uh, test miles and of course Jeep since 1941 has been an off-road company uh, originally making war vehicles and they've celebrated uh, over 70 years of uh, making some of the toughest four by four vehicles in the united states you're listening to test miles and fm news 101 i'm nick miles and we'll be back with more from the mudfest event in snoqualmie at the dervish rally school it's test miles on fm news 101 Throw it in neutral and coast in with testmiles.com. Welcome back to Test Miles. I'm Nick Miles, and today the entire show coming from the Dirtfish Rally School in Snoqualmie, Washington, where we are test driving 24 of the best SUVs and CUVs in America to find out what the best in class winners are. Now, we are going to start looking at the premium standard utility vehicle segment. 
these vehicles include the Acura MDX, BMW's X5, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, Lexus GX460, and the VW Touareg TDI. We are going to start off with the Touareg. This is a diesel vehicle. I'm going to be driving, and uh, Sean's going to be narrating. He's taking this first left-hand corner. The back end came out extremely on this one, but still pretty capable. I felt like... Ooh, we almost lost it there going around the left-hand corner, but Nick finally pulled it away. This has a lot of understeering. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, it's actually uh, it's harder to keep it on the track, even with, with a low amount of gravel. As you can see, this thing kicks it up quite a lot, and it makes it a little bit harder for it to stay on the course. Um, also, the safety systems, which we have to keep on on this course, tend to kick in, and uh, what ends up happening is that the... Uh, the throttle backs off as soon as I start to have some steering issues, even if I try to drift it a little. I had problems with it on the track yesterday. I felt like it steered extremely heavy and wasn't as nimble as I'd hope it would be being a Volkswagen. So continuing with the premium standard utility class vehicle, we are in the Acura MDX. And this time around, he's joined us on the radio show on the phone before, but Vince is here from Acura. So we're going to go through the course. Uh, tell me a little bit about the super handling all-wheel drive. So super handling all-wheel drive is a great system that is, is beyond just regular all-wheel drive in that it has the ability to overturn the rear wheels on, on the outside of your turn. That helps pull you through the turn and, and it, it uh, initiates the turn. We just took the first left-hand corner that we've been taking on a lot of them, and this one actually performed well. It didn't oversteer. It handled it greatly. And is that is that uh, that's indicative of this super handling all-wheel drive system? Because my end my, my end is staying in place, Vince. <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. Yes. Yes. This is a characteristic of this. It's pulling you. Plus, you know, it's it's delivering a lot of power to the front wheels to pull you through as well. So once the back end's already slid around. I'm in the back seat and I'm not even getting thrown around like I have with some of the other vehicles. I love this thing. And as if you notice too, that despite the fact that we are off-road, the ride's actually not that punishing. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a absorbing these bumps pretty well. Yeah, I mean it feels like I'm just doing a general everyday road tasks. So we're in our final vehicle in this class and uh, Sean and I have swapped spaces. And Sean is now in the driver's seat. He's going to show us what he can do. And we are in uh, the Grand Cherokee, the diesel version of it. And along for the ride is Patrick from the Cries the Group. So we are in a limited version. The diesel is available in the Limited, Overland, and Summit models. Uh, starting at 42000 so it's a fantastic value and gets up to 30 miles per gallon. We have 240 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque. Um, both the fuel economy and torque are best-in-class numbers. How's the Grand Cherokee diesel going to cope with the off-road course that we've set up here? Oh, it's going to have no problem at all. We have full-time four-wheel drive. And the course we're going on now is more of a high-speed course, so it, the auto, for, automatic four-wheel drive system will do just fine. The other course that's here is a, a more extreme rock-crawling type of course. And we have um, four-wheel low that we can put it in. It's got limited slip differential to help climb up the slippery stuff. We're going to do just fine. All right, here we go. Sean's heading into the course. And if there's a straightaway of about 150 yards of just pure gravel, I'll head it off by a left-hand turn, powering through these uh, almost like a chicane situation here around the bushes, as we did at the beginning of this course with the other vehicles. And uh, it's doing pretty well, right, Patrick? Absolutely, yeah. With this... Um, the Grand Ch Jeep Grand Cherokee has a sport mode that actually kind of lowers the um, restrictions put on the uh, stability control system that allows you to have a little more fun. And it does. And I mean, we again, this car really built for off road, trail rated, and we got through that course in probably about two and a half, three minute time. And again, performing extremely well as we exit the off road course. Here are the results for this year's Mud Fest. So we looked at the family utility vehicle, and the overall winner in that category is the Kia Sorento SX all wheel drive. Moving on to the premium standard utility vehicle, the winner in that category was the Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited 4x4. Winner in the compact utility vehicle segment was the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk 4x4, a brand new vehicle for Jeep, and they're glad to take the title there. When we look at the premium compact utility vehicles, Mercedes drew with the Volvo XC60. 
They tired for that position. On the off-roading segment, taking those vehicles into the difficult terrain, it was actually the Range Rover that came out on top as the best off-road vehicle, and these were all voted on by 24 of the journalists from the Northwest Automotive Press Association. And when we asked them to come up with their favorite vehicle from the whole event, the number one vehicle and the Northwest Automotive Press Association's Outdoor Activity Vehicle of the Year was named as the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk 4x4. Congratulations to Jeep, and thanks to the Northwest Automotive Press Association. You've been listening to Test Miles. I'm Nick Miles on FM News 101. Vehicular Entertainment. This is Test Miles with automotive expert Nick Miles. Favorite us, tweet us, friend us, love us, all at testmiles.com.